Welcome everybody to Monday Night Live. My name is Derek Arden and tonight we have a fascinating session with BBC, ex-BBC BBC producer Esther Stanhope, a bundle of ideas, a good friend of uh, Monday Night Live. And tonight we're going to talk about handling pressure, high pressure moments, because they might even be called after the uh, football at Wembley when sadly England came uh, second or equaled f equal first, whichever way you want to reframe it and look at it, uh, taking, a taking a penalty with um, two billion people watching you on global TV. If that went through your mind, you'd have all sorts of issues. Uh, welcome Esther, fantastic to see you. Thanks for joining us yet again. And uh, Esther, I'm going to hand over to you to handle the first session and um, away you go. Thank you so much. Thank you, Derek. Hello. Good to see you. Hello, Jill English. Give us a wave. And if you're watching a recording of this, you won't have your reaction buttons handy. But if you're watching this live, as we are at this very moment, please do feel free to use your reaction. So look, give me some love. Let's just practice a little bit now. If you're watching the recording, this will, you won't be able to see all the hands up and the love hearts coming up. But we're going we're gonna, gonna to be using this raise your hands function tonight as well. Because we are going to have, this is like a chat show tonight, isn't it, Derek? We're kind of going to do a behind the scenes virtual water cooler moment show. And it's going to be, in, it's a game of two halves and there's going to be an interval. We're going to have part one and then we're going to have part two after we've had a bit of a slice of orange. So part one, because it was the big game in the UK, in the England game, England versus Italy. And it kind of got us thinking about the moment that you have to score that goal, the high pressure moments. Now, my background as a live producer, I had to, I used to have to make decisions live on air, second to second decisions as part of my job on a daily basis. And I just remember the first time I went live in a BBC studio. And when I watched those penalties and watched Saka, who's 19 years old, stand there with the world on his shoulders and millions of people viewing him, and he's got to score a penalty with a giant goalkeeper. I thought, that is a high pressure moment. And actually, that has got very little to do with football. I thought about when I had my first high pressure moment, I remember the first time I went live on air and we had to press, you know, press the button, you're going to go live. And when I first went live on air as a producer and I was in charge of the whole show, different feeds were coming in, I wanted to be sick and my, my, I couldn't feel my legs. I had an out of body experience. And it reminded me a little bit of when I first had to um, do some public speaking, which is why I wrote my book, Goodbye Glossophobia, because it's all about the fear of public speaking. So I am really interested in this phenomenon of fear, and then you're having an out-of-body experience. And I'm sure you have experienced that too, or I'm sure you've seen people have that experience. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to talk about these high-pressure moments. So for me i i personally just when we go just talk about the football for a second i'm not really a football fan like some of you i'm not really come on uh, uh, you know have come on england i wasn't wearing a football shirt yesterday but i was following it and i did and i was very interested in the comments that um i was watching the bbc last night and there was gary lineker was talking to rio ferdinand and alan shearer and rio ferdinand as derek said he said when i'd take a penalty my legs went to jelly and Alan Shearer said, at that moment, it's horrible. It's a horrible moment when you, when you have to stand there. But he said, the one thing that you need to do is you need to stick to the plan and not change your mind. And, and, and the one thing that you, the thing that you fall back on in those high pressure moments are the drill, the drill, the practice, the practice, the drill, the practice, the drill, the drill. Now, if you're 19 years old, even if you've been playing since you were eight, you haven't got a hundred of those high pressure moments under your belt. So I think this is my, I just think that the only way that you can really deal with a high pressure moment like that is by having the experience. And the only way by having the experience is by throwing yourself into those high pressure moments. When I got over my fear of public speaking, cause I really was, I was the, I used to freeze and my mind used to go blank. And I, for years, I, I 
had this, um, I used to freeze and not remember anything. And it had nothing to do with the content, the style, my voice, my interpretation of the message. It, it had everything to do with my brain <laughs> and my heart rate going up. And, and, and so I'm, I'm very interested in your, view, your views on this this evening. So what we're going to do, Derek, what do you think? Do you think that high pressure moment, do you, have you got your tips? I'd like to, I'd like to, we're going to be gathering tips, but Derek, what are your thoughts on that exact moment? Well, when I presented to 500 people for the first time, my knees went to jelly as well. And also um, somebody, and I mentioned this before, somebody said to me, uh, don't screw this up just before I, um, I went on. And as Amy Rowlandson will tell, her, tell us all at some stage, that's a negative embedded command, which plants it in your mind, screw it up. So that didn't help either, but... Um, I went to a coach and a coach recommended bark rescue remedy when you're really under pressure. I have no idea if it works or not, but it's a placebo and uh, I have a little squirt of that and uh, away you go. So, uh, and a few deep breaths. So that's my, really? my that's interesting. Isn't it? I wonder if a bark rescue remedy would have helped Saka at that moment when he had to uh, score the goal. I mean, actually he took quite a good penalty, but he telegraphed it. And this, this, let's not forget this goal, this goalkeeper has a 68% save record on penalties under pressure. And he's huge. And, yeah, I, um, I still think that, the, that mentally it's very difficult to score the perfect penalty when your your brain must be you you must be almost not there because it, it, the pressure is, is is so huge so what we'd really like to do is is we're going to go into little breakout rooms uh, and then we'd like to share your stories of your high pressure moments but mainly your tips we'd like to know what are your rescue remedies for these high pressure moments whether you're talking about saka or yourself we've all had that moment of this is make or break. This is squeaky bum time, as they call it in football. And I guess, Esther, we're all yeah. going to get, we're still going to get them going forward in our lives if we're ambitious people and we're going to be going for it. And then we'll be yeah. coaching and mentoring other people. So this is red hot. And somebody mentioned leadership before. It's yeah, lead, this is definitely in the, lead, in the leadership vein. Calls it, calls it all down. So I'm going to put people into nine breakout rooms. What's yeah. the task, Esther? Because I've got the flip chart behind me. I'm going to record. The, yeah, well, the, the task is share. If, if you had a high pressure moment or you have a, high, if you have a, story, a short story, please share that. But actually, what we really want to do, we're not going to have very long because we're doing a game of two halves tonight, folks. We're going to have about seven minutes. So I don't know how many people are in each room. Hopefully about three. Yeah, three. About three in each room. So, yeah. But share your tips for those high pressure moments. I mean, obviously... You know, the tip is get experience, but maybe how can you fast track the experience? Can you fast track experience? So what are your tips um, and your particular, your individual experiences? That's what we're discussing. We're going to chuck a load, load of the tips onto the flip chart. So when you're coming out of the, when you come out of the breakout room, we'd like you to share the tips um, in the, in the chat box. Okay, um, well, we're going into the breakout rooms now. You probably have to click on it. They're all assigned automatically, so you're going to meet some people you haven't met before. Yes. So away we go. And Alex, if your mic isn't working, you can just put your tips in the chat. That's fine. Go for it. Then we can take it off gallery view when we want to see the flip chart. Okay, welcome so back. Welcome back from the breakout room. If you're watching the recording of this, you can, press, you can press pause while you think about your high pressure moments, but we just had quite a lot of time to think about it. So let's, let's start sharing some of your tips in the chat, but also I would much rather you raise your hand and then you can share your tip live with your lovely voice. So if you wanna raise your hand either digitally or yes, Tim's got his a real hand. Tim, we'll go to you first. Tim Durkin, what, what is your top tip well, I learned, I learned something from Chantel, which she is a dressage competitor and um, she, you know, they have to memorize the course and uh, she was having trouble memorizing. Uh, and then she remembered a breathing technique taught by a neuroscientist, uh, which I happened to learn just three weeks ago from another neuroscientist mm -hmm. and it's inhale for four, hold for seven, exhale for eight. It's the four, seven, eight methodology. 
my contribution was um, because I work with mental management uh, professionals, world champions, wherever there's success, there is a process. And I have asked countless world champions what they think about during the height of competition, whether it's PGA golfers, archery, shooters, soccer player, penalty kicks, they say nothing. All we do is run our process, run our program. And mm-hmm. um, I, you could see that several of the ki- players yesterday used their process. But if you look back in the film, you'll see Saka, I hope that's how you pronounce his name. Saka, yeah did not, uh, he was thinking something other than program or process. And I think, I think Rashford was as well. Um, And they pointed out that he wasn't really looking at the ball. One of them kind of lost his concentration, but you're absolutely right. So yeah, uh, absolutely. Think of nothing, run your process. Yeah, excellent. And my my word for that would be drill, which is basically the same drill. It's got to be drilled into you. Um, Paul, let's have, let's have your tip. Okay. I, I, um, I started with my, my uh, childhood when I was probably, I think, about eight or nine. I remember um, passing out um, by fainting in the school uh, assembly, right? And that, that was an unpleasant experience, obviously, and didn't know what was happening. And it was, uh, uh, well, it's lived with me forever since then. Then I got a job, you know, move on, you know, lots of years. And I had a job where I knew I was going to have to do a lot of presentations in public. And the big fear was that I would faint. Now, as it happened, in, uh, there was a period in my life when somebody, uh, I, I w- was with a counselor who went through emotional freedom technique, the EFT. And it wasn't for this, it was for another version, but I, for another issue. But I, I remember saying that, you know, I was, I'd been asked to present at a, at a uh, conference and that was my fear. And he said, well, give me, let's do 10 minutes of what they call tapping. Oh, emotional yes. freedom technique. Yes. Uh, and, and, Unbelievable that that fear of passing out doing a speech is gone. I mean, I'm, I'll say I'm always, you know, nervous, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We all we all know that, um, but that fear of just sort of collapsing out of the world is is gone. So it's well, the EFT. Like, you know what? So I've, I've got a, I've got many friends that are neuroscientists and holistic therapists and psychologists. One of my friends is a therapist. She um, specializes in this tapping technique as well. So the idea is that you tap certain parts of your, of your body, you, your fingers. Right. Yeah. So we, if, yeah. You get, if you get the, just a bit next to your nail there, you can all do it now. Let's all have a go tapping or you can tap each finger. It's the little fat bit next to your nail. And if you tap that, 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 that actually affects your central nervous system. That's right. You tap. But there's also parts of the there's parts of the um, the face around your eyes. I think yeah, you've got you go through everywhere the under the chin, under the and, chin, under the arms, and then there's and, on and your you went, collarbone. I think you tap your collarbone. Right. Look, I, right. I'm not an expert, you, but you it, get it, you get to the end. Um, as just to say, ever quick, if you've gone through this routine, then you say you 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 tap your head and say, I'd banish myself or I free myself of all these fears. Okay, and, um, let's all do it. I'm freeing myself from all these fears. <laughs> I'm keep going, guys. I'm going to take a quick screenshot. So tap your head and smile a lot and say, I'm freeing myself. Of all- Come on, Derek, you join in. I'm freeing myself of all these fears. Let's all do it now. Look at the camera. <laughs> yes. We've got, look at that. Nearly 30 people freeing ourselves. My friend Olivia is going to be so happy that I actually passed, passed this on. Thank you, Paul. That's great. So we've got William and Amy. We've got two quick tips from William and Amy, and then we're going to go on to part two. Derek, is that okay? Another two tips from William and Amy. And That's Amy. fine. And guys, put your tips in the chat box if we don't have a chance to get to you. Let's yeah, put them in the chat box now, so because we are going to be publishing the chat as well after we're going to we're going to put the, all the tips together. So even if you've shared your tip, like the process, um, Tim, if you want to just put a couple of sentences down about process or process. <laughs> <laughs> um, please do so William your tip quickly William uh, yeah, very, very quickly yeah. builds on what Tim was saying that is you know, if you're at the top of a black run that you didn't know you couldn't get down um, just remember that you've done all the training you know what you're doing just use the process as Tim would say but I think what it highlighted to me is that we often are in situations where 
we know exactly what to do, we've practiced the skill, but the situation is different. And when the situation is different, the skill's still the same, just apply it. Yeah, so same skill, different situation. Same skill. I know another version of that, but it's a bit rude. <laughs> but it's, it's falling back on the same skill. It's the same as I've done before. And if you tell your brain, I have done this before, I know what I'm doing. I have done this before. I know what I'm doing. But on the other hand, I, I've worked really, really, really hard personally to overcome certain fears. And um, the, the only way I've, I've overcome fears is by facing it and doing it and, and doing it and finding a process and getting, getting it drilled into me. And, um, and now I, you know, I think once you do it, the more you do, the better you are at the drill. And, and then I'm actually really, really much more, I'm not complacent about it. I think for a while I got a bit complacent. Oh, I can do this now. But now I absolutely, I really appreciate the, the mantras and, you know, the visualizations, the breathing exercises, the warm ups, the focusing. I don't underestimate the power of that now. And I think, you know, it's almost like I've gone full circle personally. Amy, what's your tip? Last one. <laughs> So you just mentioned it there, Esther. It's about visualization and focusing oh. on what, what you do want, not what you don't want. And often people focus so much on what they don't want. And yes. I was guilty of this in when I used to do a lot of competitive rowing, focusing on not catching a crab and getting a clean start. So all I did is I just changed my mantra of what I didn't want to focus on with what I did and really focusing on what was important and essentially focusing on why. Why was I trying to, what was it going to achieve in that particular race? And that was what made me a national champion rower. That's amazing. I love that. When you say catching a crab, is that when the, when the oar goes a bit flat? It's when, when it, it goes, goes right deep and it can, it can actually knock you right round. So yeah, wow. it's, not good. it's not good. And that's not what you want. <laughs> yes. I mean, if you say, you know, oh no, I don't want to catch a crab. Then you go and catch a crab. You know, you don't get that out of your brain. Get the, get the, what, the, 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 the negative stuff out. So Graham, we've got some great tips there. We've got breathing. We've got tapping. We've got the process, the drill, the practice. And then Amy's absolutely golden tip visualizing the positive messages visualizing the why the, the purpose what do you want what do you actually want to focus on um derek what do you, what do you make of that i thought it was fantastic and there's also some fantastic fantastic points in the chat which i'm uh, just uh, sharing Godfrey says big pressure moments can come ex unexpectedly when you don't have time to prepare you just have to believe in yourself and positive mental attitude on the whole thing. Um, Esther, that's fantastic. We're out of time. Um, thank you for that. I'm going to stop the recording and then restart it in part two. Thanks everybody for your tips. We'll have time on another show to go through some of those tips because to be honest, uh, I'm sure we've kind of come up with another 10 or 20 tips. So thanks everybody for joining uh, Monday Night Live. And if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on the negotiations, podcast please send me an email or join us live on a monday night uh, thank you very much thank you it's a wrap